the millennial, Generation Z, and the digital native. These terms are often used to describe individuals born in 1980 onwards after the widespread adoption of digital technologies and the internet. The digital native has grown up immersed in a world of technology, relying on internet-enabled devices for social, recreational, economic, and educational interactions. Already at the midpoint of the second decade of the 21st century, it has become critical to ensure that internet and instructional technologies are available to juveniles within the juvenile justice and alternative education settings. In December 2014, the United States Department of Education and Justice published guiding principles for providing high quality education, calling for teachers to teach high school, college, and career ready standards, to use creative methods, as well as new and emerging technologies, and to provide assistive technologies as needed for students with special needs. These guiding principles also warn of the risk of depriving internet access to students and teachers, leading to possible learning inequalities for youth in custody. The internet, or the information superhighway, connects users to vast and rich multimedia resources essential for high quality learning opportunities. The actual highway is a fitting metaphor for describing the roles and responsibilities of providing internet access in juvenile justice and alternative education settings. The drivers, the users of the information superhighway are our students when they have the opportunities to learn, but they must be taught how to navigate the websites. Their high performance vehicle of choice, that's the digital, that's the digital device that accesses the information superhighway. And there's many roads with many millions of destinations. Scenic sites, wonderful instructional websites and resources to enrich learning and knowledge. And along the way there are sites that can be um, distracting and dangerous, particularly in the juvenile justice setting. Then there's the highway patrol staff who are physically and technologically present to watch and monitor for the user's safety while students use the information superhighway. There's the highway maintenance crew. Their job is to support technology to ensure the smooth access of technology and internet usage for students and teachers and who help to open websites for, for learning. So technology implement, implementation in the juvenile justice setting is, is heavily dependent on human beings being able to communicate and coordinate their, their endeavors. And it is essential to ensure that this happens. Then there is the road planner, the education or facility administration who must plan for the rollout of the information superhighway. Administration must consider budgeting factors, budgeting for new and the continuous maintenance 
of technology and the internet. And then there's the question of where to find high quality, cost effective technologies. Try searching the internet for freeware or open software for education. You'd be surprised what you'll find. You will find Open Office, a great productivity suite for students and teachers to use in the classroom. Google Apps for Education is a great web-based tool that helps teachers to collaborate and record live attendance and academic needs for the students during the day. Technology support, partnering with local school districts, local businesses, colleges and universities. These, these are great resources for professional development and for equipment and support. There are also major concerns occasionally from staff about fears or attitudes, fears of internet breaches and using laptops or, or, or tablets as heavy projectiles, a possible threat to safety and security. But it's essential to promote internet and technologies for learning. And it's also important to identify staff to lead the technology charge within the facility. It's also essential to ensure professional development for all staff and teachers on how to use technologies. All of these are essential programming elements that will equip juveniles to be productive 21st century online and offline citizens. So returning to our information superhighway metaphor, information comes fast at our students. And staff must set limits, just like the real highway has speed limits, there must be limits for our learners and our, our, our internet users, such as setting classroom, classroom configuration, and the direct observation of screens and students to ensure students stay on task. There's also the, de the detection technology, such as classroom management software and internet web filters that will ensure the safety of, of users. Then there will be occasional violations. The access to digital contraband. But students must learn from, from this occasion. And, this, and, and occasional violations must not shut down the information superhighway to all its learners, to all its users. In Oregon, a, a progressive state law was adopted providing usage guidelines and policies for internet access by juveniles at the Oregon Youth Authority custody facility facilities. This included the design of behavior management procedures. So safety and security when it comes to delivering technologies and internet access is a high stakes issue, particularly within the field of juvenile justice education. So getting it right is imperative. Education programs are finding the rewards greatly outweigh its perceived threats. Technology's true power lies in how students and teachers utilize technology in the learning process. And when it's utilized successfully, technology is a great engagement tool for students. Consider Shawnee. Shawnee was a, a resident at the girls' school in Wyoming. She's a digital native. And she was a regular texter and used apps. 
But she wasn't particularly interested in the how-to of the using technologies. Her teacher introduced her to the Hour of Code initiative, an introduction to computer programming, where she gained skills. And actually, she enjoyed the process. And she fell in love with it. She gained emotional and cognitive engagement. She discovered a passion for coding that she didn't have before. It was her thing. So it provided uh, Shawnee with confidence, it empowered her to learn, and it gave her direction for future possibilities that she wasn't aware of before. So teaching, even with, with the use of technology, still remains essentially a human experience. The student-teacher relationship is critical. And teachers must continue to plan for the individual learning styles and needs of students in their classroom. Consider blended learning. Blended learning combines face-to-face -face traditional classroom methods, lecture, discussion, with computer-based student activities. This allows students to become more involved in the learning process. They become more empowered and it allows teachers to, to model um, what great digital instruction looks like in the classroom. Also, where there may be limited resources, one computer with one projector. Google Earth is great in this in this setting where the teacher might drive and the student navigates using Google Earth. As if by magic an entire class can be teleported out of the facility, out of a locked secure facility and transferred to Paris, to various countries to towns and cities, and even landmarks like Washington, D.C. and the White House. Technology is also a very versatile teaching method, particularly in the mixed ability, multi-age classroom setting of juvenile justice and alternative education. Individualized instruction using online curriculum or massive online open courses such as Khan Academy or edX allow students to pursue credit recovery and credit continuation and allow students to work comfortably at their own pace. Great for credit recovery. Then we have augmented reality. Augmented reality is a fantastic way to engage youth in the classroom. Augmented reality overlays virtual images, models, on top of regular real-world objects. So, for example, a student would see this page ordinarily in the real world, but with a device on a, ca a camera enabled device, they can shoot and, and take a, a, a picture of that device and bring it to life, allowing students to interact with a variety of different models such as the human body or the Curiosity um, Mars rover. So this is a very powerful and engaging way to hook learners. This is also very important in the secure setting because these models allow students to, to integrate and work with objects that might ordinarily pose safety and security risks within the secure setting. So there are also other exciting options, particularly emerging technologies, such as game-based learning. 
that scaffolds learning concepts into gameplay and then has the student demonstrating mastery when they level up or, or achieve um, the task at the end of a level. Bright, Bright Bite Labs research shows that students benefit both socially and academically from the immediate formative peer-to-peer -peer, peer -peer feedback of online gaming. And then there is 3D printing, an affordable and more accessible technology than in previous years, in previous times. And 3D printing and computer-aided design can be used to, to teach um, digital design and inspire careers in, in science, technology, engineering, and math. At Oregon Youth Authority, innovative instruction looks like driver simulators, students sitting in driver simulations, or students learning in a digital music studio. Also at Oregon Youth Authority, students are prepared for training and readiness for the A plus certification, technical certification. Lots of possibilities, lots of engaging possibilities. Also, if your facility or education program has not considered social media, this is a powerful way to communicate with stakeholders, community members, parents, other schools. It invites these stakeholder groups into the detention and alternative education classroom. It promotes and demonstrates a digitally inclusive culture. So, the current generation of internet and technology users has changed and evolved. In Gary King's book entitled iBrain, he describes how the pace of information and internet enabled devices has actually changed, radically changed, the development and function of the adolescent brain. Digital natives rely on information access. And that is a reality. And that is a reality that features more keystrokes and fewer pen strokes. Mark Prensky, a noted scholar, says that traditional teaching methods must change and be adapted to the new ways that digital natives are learning. And accordingly, teachers and, fa and facilities must plan accordingly for these digital learning needs. Pransky also notes that teachers' new role for the 21st century classroom is in partnering with students, coaching and guiding them in technology usage. The educator's role also remains the same because educators must ensure great questioning and providing context to learners in the classroom, as well as academic rigor and solid and varied student evaluation and assessment practices. Students must be given the opportunity to arrive at curriculum outcomes for their time in history. Juveniles in juvenile justice and alternative education programs must be given equality of access to the information superhighway and its many wonderful technology treasures. Thank you.